And that's when I realized that we weren't surrounded by slaughterhouse workers. We were surrounded by animal rights activists dressed up like slaughterhouse workers, and we were about to rescue a bunch of chickens. What's up everybody, Natalie here, and you may have noticed that I didn't post a video a couple weeks ago, and that's because I was busy doing probably the coolest thing that I've ever done, I had the opportunity to help rescue chickens from a slaughterhouse. Today, we're gonna be talking about open rescue, and I was surprised that a lot of you haven't heard about it, so we're going over what it is, how it started, what it feels like, how you can get involved, what it's like going into a slaughterhouse, and more. Parts of this video will be left intentionally vague for legal reasons. Making this video itself is a legal risk, but it's one I'm prepared to take. So don't worry about that. If you've ever seen someone leave their dog unattended in a hot car and wondered if you could break the window to get the dog out, then you already understand the idea behind open rescue, which is that we should have the legal right to rescue animals from distressing and dangerous situations. 14 states already have these laws protecting dogs and Direct Action Everywhere, or DXE, is working on a campaign to extend these laws to include all animals that are in need of rescue. The eventual goal is to establish personhood for animals, so they're not viewed as property, but instead as individuals who deserve rights. Now, if you're a non-vegan watching this, you may think that that sounds ridiculous, but it's important to remember that personhood is a legal term. It wasn't that long ago that women and black people weren't considered persons. When I first heard about open rescue, I thought it sounded really arrogant and egoic, and I couldn't understand why activists couldn't just rescue the animals and not put it all over social media and, you know, get all the clout and face all these legal risks that I felt were preventing them from rescuing more animals. But once I learned more about the overall strategy of open rescue, I saw that the media attention and the legal risks is what makes open rescue effective. It's a form of civil disobedience. And when people see that activists are willing to give up their liberty to protect animals, they start to take animal rights more seriously. The unfortunate reality is that most people consider animal rights to be a joke. When we risk our freedom to go into these places, expose the horrific conditions, and get these animals out, people start paying attention. Now let's talk about what it was like actually doing an open rescue. I want to make it clear that I didn't do any of the planning. I didn't know we were doing a rescue. I don't want to take any of the credit for it. Literally all I did was show up. The rescue was part of ALC or Animal Liberation Conference, which is run by DXE. And when you sign up for the conference, you can put yourself on either one of two teams. There's the green team and the red team. The green team is for people who don't want to risk getting arrested. Since I was in a relatively good position to get arrested, I chose to be on the red team. I was fully prepared to get arrested. You know, I'd given my personal belongings to a friend. I had told the people who needed to be told and I got all ready and met up with the rest of the red team. We were all nervous, excited, cold, and ready to be told what we'd be doing, but we were not told what we'd be doing. Instead, they reminded us of our rights if we got arrested and we were given safety vests and basically sat around for a couple hours waiting and being driven around. Finally, we made it to a suburb and we were told that we'd be going to a slaughterhouse. So when we get out of the car, I look around and it's not anything like the other slaughterhouses I've been to, they've all been in really remote areas. This was just kind of a normal looking suburb. There was a Starbucks, a restaurant, a gym, and I saw the rest of the green team was there. So there were about 200 people there. We all start walking together and people have signs, they have megaphones, they're chanting, you know, typical animal rights shit. And then at one point, the red team leader motions to us and we go over to her. She's talking into her walkie talkie and we're all standing around. At one point she says, let's go. And she just starts walking. So we follow her and we're walking toward this slaughterhouse. And then I see the slaughterhouse workers standing outside, you know, they're smoking, they're chatting. There are all these big metal doors and I have no idea what's gonna happen. I see no way that we're gonna be able to get through these doors. But we just keep walking. The workers start yelling at us. They're saying no trespassing and we're gonna call the cops and I still don't see how we're gonna get in. At one point, one of the workers pushes open this metal door and the team lead grabs it from the outside and pulls herself in and then we all follow her inside. And then we were in and it really felt like being in a spy movie. It was so cool. All the slaughterhouse workers were continuing to yell at us about the cops, whatever, but they weren't actually doing anything to stop us. So we keep walking through the slaughterhouse and then we get to the truck unloading area. There's a truck there and it's just 
filled with chickens and the truck is surrounded by slaughterhouse workers. So I have no idea what our plan is because they're clearly not gonna let us get anywhere near the chickens. But then they start unloading the truck and the team leader looks at us and she says, help them. And that's when I realized that we weren't surrounded by slaughterhouse workers. We were surrounded by animal rights activists dressed up like slaughterhouse workers and we were about to rescue a bunch of chickens. So I attempt to help and I say attempt because I really wasn't very good at it. There's a rope that needs to be unhooked and I couldn't do it. And then there was a crate that had to be lifted up. It was covered in shit and vomit and I couldn't lift it. But luckily there were a bunch of people there who were helping out. So we got the crate and then the team lead saw that one of the chickens was in really bad shape. So she picked her up and essentially put her into my arms. I had never held a chicken in my life and didn't realize how difficult it would be. She starts flapping her wings and squawking and almost gets away. Luckily, someone grabs her, shows me how to hold her and keep her wings down. And before I know it, we were walking out of there. We run out of the slaughterhouse and the green team is there. So we're holding the chickens, weaving around them. It's three in the morning. I'm covered in shit. Then Jane Unchained is there and she asks if I would say a few words to the camera and in my head I'm like I'm gonna say something really profound and inspirational but then when I open my mouth I say this uh we got we rescued the birds they were gonna die and we know that they didn't want to die so we uh, we took them out of the terrible situation. Yeah, let's, let's get them out of here. But luckily I didn't have more time to embarrass myself because we had to get the chickens out of there before the cops came. Because if they had come and arrested us while we had the chickens, the chickens would have been euthanized. And that's obviously the last thing that we wanted. But that did not happen. We were not arrested. The chickens were safe. All in all, we rescued 18 chickens from the slaughterhouse. They are all safe at a sanctuary. They have obviously a lot of issues, broken bones, bruises, diseases, but they're alive and that's what matters. It's so insane to me that the meat industry can get away with selling animals this sick and this abused and that the legal system continues to turn a blind eye to it. But that's why we have to take matters into our own hands. Overall, it was an incredible experience, probably the highlight of my activism career so far. Obviously, street outreach is great and I love doing it. I love when people tell me they've gone vegan, but it's a lot more satisfying to actually go into a slaughterhouse and take an animal out of there, save their life. Like that is so freaking cool and I'm so grateful that I got to be part of it. So yeah, good job, direct action everywhere. I feel like it was really well organized and fun and I feel really empowered to kind of to do this stuff, maybe not necessarily going into slaughterhouses, but making videos about it and telling stories about it, I think is really amazing. So if you do want to get involved with Open Rescue, I put some links in the description. If you don't want to get arrested, that's totally fine. There are plenty of other opportunities and ways to get involved. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this, hit that like button. Support my Patreon. You'll get early access and exclusive content. Special thanks to my morally superior patrons. Thanks for watching. Peace.